Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. It's, it's loud and clear now. We are very excited oh, to have you. Happy Father's happen. Day. Thank you. Thank you uh, for having me today. Uh, we don't celebrate pagan ho- uh, pagan days. Uh, forgive, forgive me, but... but mo- uh, it's it's a learning process for us for yes, some of understood us and forgive me for 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 going that's that. okay that that's totally fine that's totally fine it was a learning process and it's still a learning process for me now so okay. our job is to come here and teach the people the the right way according to the gospel uh, first mistaken. and foremost i would like to give uh, all praises to the most high and his son for allowing for allowing me to be here today to cover for our bishop, okay. um, that's Bishop Nathaniel, uh, okay. the leader of Israel United in Christ. Yeah. Um, I understand today we're going to be going over tithing. Yes, very, oh, very, very, that's, a, that's a, that's a heavy topic. Yes. Don't, don't get scared. <laughs> don't get scared, man. Some of you, you, do you go to church? Yes, I do. Ah, uh, man, I don't know. Your pastor might lock you out. Of to, of service next week because we are about to reveal the truth of Titan. Titan is so sensitive. It's mm-hmm. so people are are confused as to whether they should tithe or not. What what does the Bible say about it? It, it says in some places in the Old Testament and it's not in the New Testament. And during during those times, you're supposed to bring sheep and I mean. A lot of a lot of dynamics have changed. So people are a lot of people are so confused. That's why I'm so excited about this evening because Titan, I'm I'm sure they are all glued to their sets, waiting to hear the presentation you have for us on Titan. So I, I wouldn't waste much of the time. I'll just give yes, you sir. the opportunity okay. to, to to share with us what you have for us today. Okay, beautiful. In order to discuss tithing, you have to go over the root. You have to go over the core. Many of the pastors today in Ghana, on the continent of Africa have been taught the Bible, theology, through the so-called white man. Everything that they teach in these churches in Ghana was taught to them by their oppressor. Let's open up with the book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 13. We want the book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 13. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 13. Wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. The people that draw towards God are talking about the Israelites, talking about the brothers and sisters, the Israelites scattered in Ghana, scattered throughout the continent of Africa, scattered throughout America, Europe, Caribbean, and so forth. God says they draw towards him with their mouth, meaning a lot of lip service. We say we love God, but when you measure our uh, works, According to the Bible, there's no works. It's all lip service. Go ahead. And with their lips, do honor me. You hear that? And with their lips, we honor God. Go ahead. But have removed their heart far from me. And our mind, our minds are removed far from the Most High, meaning we are not keeping his laws. Just like the brothers and sisters um, scattered throughout the world today, everybody is celebrating Father's Day. Just a couple of weeks ago, or I would say about a month ago, there was Mother's Day. Before that, there was Easter. Before that, there was Christmas. All these things that are not biblical, but was taught to you by your oppressor. Just like tithing was taught to you by your oppressor. Go ahead. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. So what man taught these pastors the understanding that they have today? like the pastors of Ghana today, the preachers of these Christian churches, where did they go to to get that understanding? They went to the white man. We got to be honest. We must be honest with themselves. Nobody woke up 
opened up the book and then went and opened up a church and said, I, the Holy Ghost came to me in the middle of the night and taught me what I know now. Everybody was taught by the precept of man, whether they went to theology school in Britain or they went to theology school in Ghana. But who opened up those churches? Who gave them the understanding, the, the, the so-called, because there's no understanding really, the so-called understanding that they're teaching today. All the rhetoric was taught by the precept of man. And it's been like that since the inception of colonialism in Ghana, when the Roman Catholics came to Ghana and brought you religion. Read. Verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among the marvelous work that you're seeing is the resurrection of the Israelites, brothers and sisters. The marvelous work that you're seeing is what God established Israel united in Christ since the year 2003 to do, which is to go throughout the whole earth, wherever our people are scattered and spread this good news. What is the good news? That you are the Israelites. And then through repentance, we are going to get the kingdom of heaven through Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, not the white man that's hanging on your walls. Okay. Not the white man that's teaching you tithing and all sorts of misconceptions in the Bible. That's the marvelous work to wake you up and teach you that you're more than Ghanaians, that you are indeed the biblical Israelites and we must keep God's commandments. Read on. Even a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. So what is the wisdom of the wise men? The wisdom of the wise men is everything that you've been taught in society. Those who think they are wise. But when you open up the Bible and you get the true understanding from the messengers of the Lord, you realize, you know what? These people are not wise at all. They're actually ignorant. Some of them are plain ignorant and some of them are willfully ignorant. Go ahead. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Now go to Deuteronomy 28, and I want verse 47 to explain about the precepts of men. The precepts of men. God says their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. We must identify who taught us the Bible, and we must accept what is written. What did God say? We must accept it. In order for us to regain that, that self-identity, that self-worth, we must accept what is written in the Bible? Go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So brothers and sisters of Ghana, we got to realize we were supposed to serve God for the abundance of all things. The most high God is the creator. We are his creations. God chose us above all nations, okay? And he said, look, the Israelites, you were created to serve me. And then when you serve me, the other nations in return are going to serve you. We didn't choose that. You know what we chose to do? We chose to serve idols. We chose to um, serve self. For that reason, God punished us. Read. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. Stop. God says, for therefore, you're going to serve your enemies. Read on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. So when Britain came up against Ghana, who, who sent Britain to Ghana? You think the British just one day chose to just get on a ship, come over there to the, the beautiful continent of Africa and enslave black people? No, it was prophecy. The Most High used the white man to make sure prophecy would be fulfilled in the latter days. Go ahead. In hunger. In hunger, we had to serve our enemies. Go ahead. And in thirst. And in thirst. Go ahead. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. All right. You want clothes to cover your body. You had to serve your enemies. God calls them your enemies. The white man. Yes, I'm going to say it. Some of you are afraid to say it. Some of you probably turned the radio station off or to, is tuning into another radio station because you don't want to hear the truth. Some of you love Mazungu. You love him so much. Go ahead. And in want of all things. You hear that? God said, whatever you want, you must serve your enemies. So you want to learn about religion? Who did you have to go to? Your enemies. And your enemies turned around and taught you tithing. Why? To keep them rich. 
And now these same black skinned pastors on the continent of Africa in Ghana is teaching the wrong understanding of tithing and they're robbing the people. And us being ignorant, we're keeping them rich. Your pastor is driving around in a Rolls Royce Phantom. Meanwhile, all you got is a, is a, a broke back donkey, okay? With, with his ribs poking out because he can't even eat the proper food. God said, you have to go to your enemies in the want of all things. He is the one that taught you how to fear God, okay? He is the one that taught you the Bible. You know what? Before we get Deuteronomy, I know what I want. Um, Barakel, pull up the first article, please. Ultimate FM. Pull up the first article. Yes. So what do we have here? What do we have here? Top 10 richest pastors in Ghana and their net worth. Now we know the continent of Africa is full of resources. We know who came to the land and stole those resources. We know who is profiting, who is benefiting off the resources and it's surely not the so-called African people. Ghana is not the richest country in Africa, although it sits on many riches. Now, scroll down, scroll down. Let's get some names. Let's get some names. Okay, let's read that. Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, the general overseer of the Christian Action Faith Ministries. Archbishop, wow, so he's a bishop. Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams sits comfortably at the top with the, I can't see the rest of this because my there's a box blocking it, okay? Is the richest pastor in Ghana, $6.9 million. Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams has great taste in luxurious cars, expensive jewels, and suits. Go down. And he is one of the few to own a private jet. Hey, that sounds like Creflo Dollar from the United States. They might be related. Okay, number two, Apostle Quadro Safu. If I miss if I'm mispronouncing their names, please excuse me. Um Apostle Quadro Safu. So this guy's an apostle. So he's on the same level as Paul, huh? Apostle Quadro Safu Kantaka is the second richest person in Ghana. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Go ahead. Go down, go down. Come on, let's get some more. Hey, go back up to his face. I can't let that slide. What in the world? What happened? Is he using, is he bleaching? Host, is he, is he ble bleaching? You guys know him probably more than me. So I got to ask you, is he bleaching? Uh, Captain, uh, so uh, it seems, it seems, it seems so. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. You're on a black continent and you're bleaching. Get me props, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31 real quick. Keep it right there so everybody can see. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And this is an apostle. And brothers and sisters, this, this is not a personal attack on anybody, but we must reveal the truth. And guess what? Everybody on this list, they can repent if they want the kingdom of God. They can repent. The doors of repentance is, over, is, um, is open for them. Proverbs 3, chapter 31. It's FM. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 31. Mm -hmm. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose says, not. Envy thou not the oppressor. So ain't no pastors is supposed to be sitting on a pulpit, bleaching, trying to look like the white man, trying to look like Esau, Mazungu. What the hell is going on? This is crazy. Go down. And it says, choose none of his ways. We ain't supposed to choose none of his ways. And guess what? The misconception of tithing is one of his ways. Now you have Pastor Dr. Mensa Otubil, 6.3 million. Go down. Go down. I want the whole, I want everybody's name. You have Reverend Abufor, 6.1 million. Go down. That brother look like he's young. He look like he's in his 20s. He's balling right now. Look at the Gucci shoes. Balling. 
He got Gucci shoes, but the, the people in his church got on sandals. Go down. Come on. All right. Bishop Charles Agin Asari, 5.5. Go down. Give me some more. I want some more. Bishop Dag Heward Mills, 5 million. Go down. These brothers ain't playing. Everybody's up in the mill. I didn't see not one person with 50, 60,000 a year. Money, money is good in Ghana right now. Ebenezer Adakwa Yayudom, 4 million. Go down. Bishop D Daniel, don't go back. I need the names. Bishop, nope, go back up. You missed one. I need the names. Take your time when you're scrolling. Bishop Daniel Obonim, 3 million. Then you have Reverend Sam Nikaronkie Ankra. Go down 2.5. Go down, go down. Come on, there's one more name. Move a little faster, you could do it. There we go. Prophet Badu Kobe, two million. Wow, unbelievable, unbelievable. Now get me, get me the prophecy on that because God knew exactly what would happen to his people. Get me Malachi. I mean, not Malachi, I'm sorry, Micah. Micah 3 and verse 11. Micah 3 and verse 11. So what do all of these pastors have in common? They are filthy rich, okay, off the backs, the blood, sweat, and tears of the congregants. They must repent. They must repent and start teaching the people the right way. Micah 3, verse 11. Come on. The book of Micah, chapter 3 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. The heads thereof judge for reward. So the Bible says the heads thereof judge for reward. Come on. And the priest thereof teach for hire and the priests thereof teach for hire money 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 it's all about money go ahead and the prophets thereof the because there was one brother on this list called they called him a prophet the prophets thereof go ahead divine for money divine for what divine for money the bible says they divine for money for money go ahead yet who they lean upon the Lord and say. So even the though they're in the wrong, teaching you the, the wrong scriptures, the wrong breakdowns, the wrong understanding, not teaching you the commandments, teaching you tithe, 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 10%. Even though they do these things, they lean upon the Lord and say what? It's not the Lord among us. I say, but we're rich. But we're rich. Isn't the Lord with us? Isn't the Lord with us? Go ahead. None evil can come upon us. And they think that no evil shall come upon them. But evil will come to their doorstep if they do not wake up and teach the people the right way. If they do not repent. That's why it would behoove all of you, Ghanaians, to come up out of these Christian churches. None of you know your nationality. None of you know your identity. All of you are completely lost. Why are you lost? Because the heads thereof judge for what? Reward. The heads thereof, which are the pastors, are not teaching you the right way. They're not teaching you the right way. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy 14. Start at verse. Now we're going to go to the Old Testament in order to get the true understanding of tithing. Brothers and sisters, write this down. In order to get the true understanding of tithing, you must go to the Old Testament. You must go to the Old Testament to get the full understanding. I want Deuteronomy chapter 14, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 14, and I want you to start at verse 22. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed. God says thou shalt truly tithe. All the increase of thy seed. Host, what does seed mean? What is this talking about when it says seed? Can you hear me, Captain? Yes, sir, I can hear you. I asked you a question. Yes. The Bible says thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed. Yeah. What is the seed making reference to? I think that it has to, uh, it has to, for the want of a better word it has to do with money that's how we see it if, if it's seed 
then that's that's for the church is preached now that okay bring the seed what is the literal what is the literal meaning of seed so literally it means the fruits of your labor thank you it's talking about vegetables and fruits yes exactly agriculture it's literally okay. it's not talking about money because if i go in my backyard now and i put a ten dollar bill inside of the ground that ten dollar bill is not going to grow and become a million dollars so exactly. when we hear the word seed it's talking about agriculture it's talking about fruits and vegetables yeah. okay read ash bell that the field bring it forth year by year uh-huh and thou shalt eat before the lord thy god uh -huh. in the place which he shall choose to place his name there so the place that god chose was jerusalem was jerusalem go ahead the tithe of thy corn. The tithe of thy corn. Come on. Of thy wine. Of thy wine. Come on. And of thine oil. Of thine oil. Come on. And the firstlings of thy herds uh -huh. and of thy flocks. Go ahead. And thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Keep reading. And if the way be too long for thee. Now it says, if the way be too long for thee, because you had people living on the outskirts of Jerusalem, we had to go up to the temple and offer up tithing to the Levitical priests, the Levitical priests. None of the pastors in Ghana are Levitical priests. That's one. And two, tithing was never money. We're going to explain it. Some of you, some of you might get the white supremacist thought in your mind right now that money did not exist during biblical times. That's the white man in your brain, because the, the Bible is a black man's book, the Israelites book. OK, some of you think that we was running around like Neanderthals. We had money back then. They were called shackles. We had money back then. But God says, read it again. Read that part again. And if the way be verse, too verse um, verse 24, verse 24. Mm -hmm. And if the way be too long for thee. Uh -huh. So that thou art not able to carry it. To carry it. The it that we had to carry, brothers and sisters, was the corn, the wine, the oil, the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks into Jerusalem. Go ahead. Or if the place be too far from thee. Come on. Which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there. When the Lord thy God have blessed thee. Then shalt thou turn it into money. What did you turn into money? The corn, the oil, the flock, the wine. You exchanged it for money. Okay, go ahead. And bind up the money in thine hand. Put the money away. Put it in your pocket. Put it away so you don't lose it. Go ahead. And shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. That's Jerusalem. Go ahead. And thou shalt bestow that money. For whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. So when you get to Jerusalem, you buy back those things. When you get to Jerusalem, you buy back those things. Because if the place was too far, you wouldn't be carrying oil, corn, wine, and cattle. So God said, exchange it for money. But when you get to Jerusalem, read that again. And thou shalt bestow that money. For whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Come on. For oxen. When you get to Jerusalem, buy the oxen. Read. Or for sheep. When you get to Jerusalem, buy back the sheep. Go ahead. Or for wine. When you get to Jerusalem, buy the wine. Come on. Or for, or for strong drink. When you get to Jerusalem, buy the strong drink. Come on. Or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. Read on. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. Read on. And the Levite that is within thy gate. The Levites were the priests, the sons of Aaron. Okay, the sons of Moses. Okay, go ahead. Thou shalt not forsake him. Why? Because the Levites, the Levites did not receive an allotment of their land, of land. Their inheritance was God. The tithing was for them. Go ahead. For he have no part, no inheritance with thee. You hear that? He has no part or inheritance with thee. Read on. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all thy tithe of thine increase the same year. Go ahead. And shalt lay it up within thy gates. Read on. And the Levite 
because he have no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come, and shall eat and be satisfied. You hear that? Eat and be satisfied. And we were supposed to give a portion of what we had to eat to the Levites. You cannot eat money. Go ahead. That the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand, which mm -hmm. thou doest. Amen. You hear that? So tithing was never. We always had money because people will say, well, the Israelites didn't have money. No, we did. God says, buy the sheep, buy the this by that when you get to Jerusalem if the place be too far from thee but pastors would read scriptures like Malachi and misinterpret it and then have everybody in Ghana all screwed up in the head making them rich walking around with three point uh three point million four million dollar jets meanwhile the people in your congregation what do they do they walk or they jump on those taxi cabs just to come support you Get me Malachi. Let's go to the scripture that they pervert. Let's go to the scripture that they pervert. So brothers and sisters, when you go to church, challenge your pastor. Tell them to open up the Bible and show us where it says to give 10% of your hard-earned money, your hard-earned CDs. Tell them, ask them, ask them to show you in the Bible. You must challenge them. Our pastors, you must wake up. All right. This is not hatred. We want you to repent. Come join Israel United in Christ. Come learn from the bishop so you can teach the people the right way, man. We have to stop being selfish. We have to stop being selfish and think about our people. There should be no reason why there's a humongous divide between the rich and the poor in Ghana. There's no middle class over there. It's just straight rich and straight poor. There shall be no reason why your pastor is leaving the church and going to a mansion, but you go into a shack. You going into a shack. Let's get Malachi. Come on. The book of Malachi. Chapter I want three. you to start. Let me get it with you. Hold on. Let me get it with you. So brothers and sisters, next time your pastor asks you for 10% tithing, give them 10% of your jollof rice. How about that? Or your fufu. How about that? Because that's what it was all about in the first place. It was never about money. All right, Malachi chapter 3. And I want you to um, start at verse 3. Read verse 3. Let's see who is it talking about. Go ahead. The book of Malachi chapter 3 and verse 3. And he shall sit as a refiner and, purif and purify of silver. Mm -hmm. And he shall purify the sons of Levi. The sons of who? The sons of Levi. The sons of Levi, the sons of Levi. Go ahead. Now jump down to verse eight. Verse eight. Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? This is the famous. Here it is. Here's the famous scripture. Will a man rob God? Go ahead. Yet ye have robbed me. And then they tell the people in the congregation, but you have robbed me. You have robbed me. You didn't give me 10%. You robbed me. Go ahead. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? Uh-huh. In tithes and offerings. Who was God speaking to? Who was God speaking to? We just read it. We just read it in verse 3. He said the Levites. God had a problem with the Levitical priesthood. God had an issue with the Levitical priesthood when it came to tithings and offerings. They weren't doing their job the right way. That's who God had a problem with. And guess what? God has a problem with the priest of today. He has a big problem with the priest today. You know why? Because they are not teaching the people what they ought to be teaching them. Okay, drop that. Go to the book of Ezekiel. Let me get it first. Get me Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 26 ezekiel 22 verse 26 okay brothers and sisters listening uh write notes take the notes down so you won't be confused about tithing anymore okay and please follow us at www.israelunite.org and iuic ghana facebook ezekiel 22 verse 26 because i said god has a problem with the priest today you israelite men who don't know your israelites but you indeed are the israelites God has a problem with you. 
all of the pastors in Ghana, throughout Africa, America, and Europe, God has a problem with you. And I'm going to show you what the problem is. Ezekiel 22, verse 26. Come on. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22 and verse 26. Her priests have violated my law. Her priests have violated God's laws. All of those priests that we just read when we pulled up the article, the 10 richest pastors in Ghana, all of them are violating God's laws. I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you. And all of them are not teaching the people what laws they're violating. Go ahead. And have profaned my holy things. And they profaned God's holy things. Where do you read about God's holy things? In the Bible. In the Bible. Go ahead. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. They don't put a difference between the holy and profane. I guarantee you right now, brothers and sisters of Ghana, today in the Christian church, all of them were celebrating Father's Day. I guarantee you a couple of months ago, they were celebrating Mother's Day. I guarantee you a couple of months ago, they were celebrating Easter. I guarantee you a couple of months ago, last year, they were celebrating Christmas. Where is that in the Bible? God says the priest is supposed to put a difference between the holy and the profane and the profane. Christmas is profane. Mother's Day is profane. Father's Day is profane. Easter's Day is profane. God never gave us that. But they'll say the laws are done away with. Meanwhile, where do you read? Think about that. Think about that, brothers and sisters. The priest will say God's laws are done away with under grace, right? But where do you read about tithing? In the Old Testament. Hello, so everything, everything is done away with, but tithing, but tithing, they give you the false interpretation of tithing. They hold on to that, but everything is done away with. It's called hypocrisy. It's called hypocrisy. Okay, finish reading. Neither have they shewed difference between the unclean and the clean. So they tell you, where do you read about what's clean? In the Old Testament. You can't say the Old Testament, the old, the laws are done away with, but God says you're supposed to show the difference between the unclean and the clean. Where do you read about what's clean and what's unclean? In the Old Testament. So this proves that your preachers are a liar. Stop giving them money and making them rich and force them to teach you the truth of the gospel. Read on. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. Some of you don't even know, don't even keep the weekly Sabbath. Friday sundown or Saturday sundown. No buying, no cooking, no working. Some of you don't even do that. Then you have God's high holy days that are written in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Surely you don't know that. Who's keeping Passover? Who's keeping tabernacles, first fruits, feast of dedication? Who's keeping that? Day of atonement? None of you are keeping that because the pastors have not been showing you the truth. All they've been whispering in your ears and shouting in your ears every Sunday is tithing, tithing, tithing. Some well, of the pastors in Ghana will go so far to tell the people in the congregation that they will not bury them if they don't tithe. And I witnessed that. I witnessed that myself when I was in Ghana. Can you Go ahead, hear me? Finish the verse. Hold on. Let, let's finish the verse. Go ahead. And I am profane among them. God says he's profane among them. You hear that, host? I see you laughing, but I want to make sure you understand. You know why? Because you go to church too. You give pastor, I can't even say pork chop. I don't know. I don't know if pork chop is famous over there. Bush meat. Pastor Bush meat. You give him 10% every Sunday. So guess what? God says that he is profaned amongst them. So you got to come up out of these Christian churches in Ghana. You got to do it. Can you, can you hear me, Captain? Yes, sir. I can hear you loud and clear. I, I, I have a couple of questions. And uh, I, I must say, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you at this, at this point. But we have a, a lot of people who have questions they want to ask. So if you're listening to this, Ultimate 106.9 FM, if you want to join our conversation, you can join us on 0233-144-199, either through... Uh, text or through call you can call us on 0233-144-199 captain you 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 say you you threw something at me and uh, about the going to church and the fact that uh my pastor will definitely be asking for tight and all that it's something that i mean we've we've i mean grown up with it's something that we're 
kind of born into. Fortunately for me, I I, I grew up a Seventh Day Adventist. So oh I in the, in the, LNG White. <laughs> I believe in the Sabbath. I mean, on Saturday, I go to church on Saturday and, and all that. But then the issue of tithing, like I said from the beginning, is very, very sensitive, in, especially in Ghana. Mm. The, the defense is that, you know, the, the gospel has become a business now. So yeah. we need money to do the kingdom business. Money to do the kingdom business. Yes. So if we don't, if our, our, our congregants don't tithe, how do we get money to do the kingdom business? And let me tie this into another question. You you spoke about the fact that in those times, there was there was money. But can you also? Is it also because in those times, money was not as common as it used? To, I mean, it it is now. That is why those times we're using the seed and not money. And as money is the most common thing now, we will let's do money instead of bringing the seed. I have a couple of questions that will tie into it, but then let me give you the opportunity to answer this one yeah. and then I'll bring the other questions. Okay, okay. First answer, the first uh, question you asked about um, the um, to do kingdom business. All right, you, you know the Lord's Prayer, right? Yeah. What is the Lord's Prayer? I want to hear you say it. <laughs> so it goes like our father who art in heaven mm -hmm. hallowed be thy name mm -hmm. thy kingdom come mm -hmm. thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven okay thy will be done thy will meaning your will god be done on earth as it is in heaven yes. what is god's will because you said they need to give tithing for kingdom business what is the will of god at then the I don't I don't get your question. What is what is the will of God? Because the kingdom to do kingdom business meaning you're doing God's will according yes. to the Lord's prayer. What is the will of God? You should know this because you've been going to the Christian church a very long time. What is <laughs> the will of God? I think the will of God is has to do with doing what God wants, which is is in the Bible, which the Bible talks it's to us. Yes, it's commanded. Let me get that for you. Psalms 40 and 8. I want Psalms 40 and 8. The book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Uh huh. Yay. Thy law is within my heart. So Psalms 40 and 8 says God's law is his will. God's laws are his will. So when you're giving your pastor 10% of your money, which is not biblical, you're enabling him. You're enabling him to keep teaching you the wrong thing. Early, I said, you guys must force your pastors to repent and start teaching you the right thing. But if you keep giving him 10% of your earnings and making him more rich, there is no consequence for his actions. You're enabling him to do wrong. Therefore, he is not doing the kingdom's business. He is doing Satan's business because Satan's job is to keep his people away from God's laws. Kingdom business, which what we do in Israel United in Christ, all praises to the Father and His Son, is teach God's laws. Okay? Now, gotcha. hold on, hold on. I didn't finish yet. I didn't finish. I, I'm just getting warmed up for you. Okay. Matthew 25. So first and foremost, you guys need to stop giving the past. I wouldn't give them, I wouldn't give them one CD. I wouldn't give them half a CD. I wouldn't give them nothing because they're teaching you the wrong way. There should be no seven-day Adventist church in Ghana. There should be no Baptist church in Ghana. There should be no um, modern-day Christian church in Ghana, no Catholic church in Ghana. That's not written in the Bible. So when you give these people money, you're enabling them to continue in their ignorance, and you're allowing them to teach you wrong. Nowhere in the Bible did God tell the Israelites to follow any Mazungu, Edomite, Esau religion on this earth. Matthew 25. Okay, Matthew 25. Now this concerns money. Matthew 25, verse um, 31. The book of Matthew, chapter 25 and verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations 
and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. Come on. Give me verse. No, no. Give me verse forty-two. Verse forty-two. Verse forty-two. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me no meat. Mm -hmm. I, I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. This is good. This is what's going to happen to these pastors if they don't repent. Okay, because how do you, some of you might say, well, is Christ hungry? What does he mean by that? We are so-called, um, well, I'm not going to say so-called, but we're supposed to be Christians, Christ-like. So yeah. if there's somebody in the church that's hungry, what are we supposed to do? Provide food for them. That's not going on in these churches. It's the other way around. They're giving food to the, they're giving money to the pastors. We're supposed to provide for the hungry. Go ahead. First, first and foremost, spiritual hunger. Meaning give, give them the right understanding of the Bible. Then physical hunger. Go ahead. I was a stranger and you took me not in. Hmm? Naked and you closed. So we're supposed to take people in. Okay. Uh -huh. This is the job that we're supposed to do. Look at these pastors. They live in mansions with 20 bedrooms. What are they doing with the rest of the rooms? Why not take some of the people in that live in poverty who might not live in such good conditions like them? House them. Go ahead. Come on. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Go ahead. Thick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Keep reading. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or a first, or a stranger, or so naked. Christ has given them the understanding. Go ahead. Or naked, mm -hmm. or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye did it, not to one of the least of these. The least of thee are the people in the congregation. Go ahead. Ye did it not to me. So we're supposed to take care of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, not scatter them even more. That's what these pastors are doing, my brother. They're not teaching them the right way. They're not <laughs> teaching them the right way. The Bible, the Bible says we're supposed to give alms. That, that's a form of alms. Nowhere did it say 10%. Nowhere in the Bible did it say, if you don't give me tithing money, 10%, I'm not going to bury you. But in Israel United in Christ, guess what we do? If you are faithful, we bury our dead. We've done it many times. Okay? How can you be a pastor and tell the people in Ghana, if you don't give tithing, I'm not going to bury you? They try to intimidate you and make you scared to give them all their money. You have to challenge these preachers. You must challenge them. Captain, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy you, you, you spoke about the fact that we have to challenge them, but you need to challenge them with knowledge. Yes, so the of God. There's, this, there's, this, there's this quotation, I don't know exactly where it is, but it says, first seek the kingdom of God and I'll, its I'll righteousness and all other things will be added. Yes. So the pastor will tell you, okay, I sought the kingdom of God and its righteousness in my, the work that I do. And God added it, and this how he did it, through the people or through the congregation. No. Be no, 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 no. Absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. They're not, so, teaching. They're not so, teaching the right way. So how does God... I mean, add all the all the others that 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 the pastor is speaking about because he's saying seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things shall be added. So okay. the pastor is in doing his work or her work is seeking the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and no. then these things will be added. And let me also say that. Let me also say. Let me help you. Let me help you. Okay. Let me help you. Let me help you. First and foremost, like we read in Ezekiel earlier. The pastors are not teaching the people the right way. That's number one. And I think everybody should know that by now in the year 2020. Okay? I know our people cannot be that simple. Well, some of them are, but you know what I mean. First, get me Matthew 6, verse 19. I want Matthew 6, verse 19. I want Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Because this, this should be the primary objective of all teachers, all priests, all pastors come on the book of matthew chapter 6 and verse 19 lay not up lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt so that's all you see rolls royce phantoms million dollar mansions 
People are laying up their treasures on earth. They want tangible stuff. They want the reward now. That's their reward, the pastors, riches. That's why in Micah says they teach for reward. They teach for gain. They teach for money. Go ahead. Where moth and, ru where moth and rust do have corrupt. Because all of those things can corrupt. They can rust. You can't take that into the grave with you. You can't take a Rolls Royce Phantom in a mansion into the grave with you. Go ahead. And where thieves break through and steal. And where what? And where thieves break through and steal. And where thieves break through and steal. Go ahead. But lay up for yourselves treasures in Here's the heaven. point that I want. Lay up treasures for what? In heaven. How do you lay up treasures in heaven? By applying the commandments and teaching the commandments. Teaching people the right way. That's the true treasure. Not the Rolls Royce Phantom. Not the big mansion. Go ahead. When neither moth nor rust do corrupt. Now you said something about how they said, well, things are adding to me, being added to me. Get me Matthew's chapter 4, verse 10, and in Barakel, get me the, uh, the second article. I want the second article. Well, well, I was work on the second. Uh, let me just say that. Okay, this was me 106.9. It's the truth shall make you free. And I'm here with Captain Isaac. We are looking at the issue of Titan. I have a few comments from Facebook. I'll, I'll read a couple of them. Okay. Then I have one from Alemakuya Ben Israel. Uh, uh, it goes like God created nations and no religions. SDA Church is white supremacy. Ellen Jean White is an Edomite, not an Israelite. She's she is the devil the Bible speaks of. So I think for, for me, uh, growing up, I mean, I, my, my dad spoke a lot about Ellen G. White and I mean, we had a lot of uh, books in our, in, in, in our house and growing up, I, I knew a, a, a little about Ellen G. White and, and the SDA church. So that's from Alemakuya Ben Israel on, on our Facebook feed. I'm saying that if you're in Ghana and you want to, you, are, you would love the conversation and you want to join us, our head of office is in Kumasi at the Cultural Center. If you find yourself uh, in Accra, you can find us in Teshi Pokwasi Tema. In the Eastern region, you can find us in Krobo Dumasi. Our days for me, or our meeting day is actually Saturday, 9 a.m. sharp. If you want directions to exactly where we meet, you can call us on 020 744 2316. 020 744 2316. Or 050 0540, sorry, 0540 859. Two five five zero five four zero eight five nine two five five. Our website you can join on on, on our website, which is www.israelunite.org. If you like what you are hearing and you want to join our feed on Facebook, you can go on IUIC Ghana, IUIC Ghana, uh, and then and join the feed. Leave your comments and and then and your, your if you have any suggestions or any questions you could also leave them there let me let me quickly go to my uh, another question before oh, you continue your, your presentation the, i have a question which goes like it says the whole bible was brought to us by the white man why then do we take some out and leave some that's the question the first question i i have and the, the presentation that you've done, are you also saying that we should not pay tight at all? I have yes. this, and then maybe we could, we could also take a few comments from Facebook. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I'll do my best to answer all the questions. Um, in regards to being people being added to the church, get me Matthew chapter 4. I want Matthew chapter 4, okay? And we're going to start at... Uh, hmm. I want you to start at verse, let me see what I want, verse 8. The book of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them mm -hmm. and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee. All if these things will be added to you. Come on. If thou wilt fall down and worship me. Go ahead. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. You hear that? 
So guess what? Satan has power too. Satan has power too. When you're teaching Christmas, Easter, and everything contrary to the Bible, guess what? That is Satan giving you your blessings. That is not from God. In order to, to understand if you're being blessed of God or being blessed of the devil, you must examine how you are living according to the Bible, how you are teaching according to the Bible. So all of these pastors who say, well, I went from 50 people in the congregation to 1,000 people in the congregation. I went from making $40,000 a year to making $6.5 million annually. Guess what? You got your money from Satan. You got your power from Satan because you are not teaching the people according to God. Okay, now get me Isaiah 56 and verse 12. Isaiah 56 and verse 12. Now, when you look at this article, let's scroll down a bit. Look at this. More than 70% of Ghana's 26 million people are Christian. Who taught you that? Who taught you modern day Christianity? White people. Okay, I don't know if you call them Mzungu in Ghana, but that's what that's the term that I'm hearing now. Are mainly coming from the continent of Africa, but God calls them Edomites, Esau. Go down, go down, go down. Look at that. Look at this. It's common to see people studying the Bible on the bus and many office workers keep, oh, I can't see that word from, from my screen. Mega church pastors such as Mensa Otubil are revered. Revered for what? Revered for what? Because they're charismatic. They give you a feel good a feel-good feeling in the church, but they don't teach you nothing. Our people are lost. They don't know who they are. They don't know why they colonized, why they enslaved. You don't know the truth of the gospel. All you know is John 3, 16. Go down. Look at this. Unbelievable. Go ahead. Come on. Go down a little bit more. Look at this. This brother, Isaac Alunu, says, my faith is everything to me. Christianity was brought to the Gold Coast by Roman Catholics and mainstream Protestants, but Pentecostal faith featuring ecstatic worship and in, and, in a, and in a God of miracles has underpinned the recent rise of faith. Go down. Look at this. This is, look at this right here. Charismatic faith came from North America. Who's the person that brought a charismatic faith to Africa from North America? Esau. Esau. And what happens is, is these pastors, these preachers in Ghana, they mimic the white man and they rob you of your money. It's plain and simple because you have no understanding. You don't know who you are. You don't know what laws of God you're breaking. Why are we in the conditions that we're in and what we have to do to get out of those conditions? That's what you should be asking yourself. That's what you should be asking these preachers. Isaiah 56 and verse 12. The book of Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 12. Yes. Come ye, say day, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. This is what the pastors are doing. Come on. And tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. You hear that? They're thinking about the abundance. One Sunday, they'll collect maybe 50 to 100,000 CDs, 100,000 uh, dollars in, in um, money. They can't wait for the next Sunday to come. All they do is think about money and how to rob the people and how to rob the people. That's all they think about. Now you said something else. You you mentioned another question. Was that it on that verse? Did I finish? Can, can you hear me? Huh? Can you hear me? Yes. Did I finish verse 12? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, look up. Yes, I'm saying before, before uh, we, we've run out of time but before we go i think that the critical question i want you to answer or to throw more light on before we get out of the studio has to do with so from all the pre presentation that you've done are you saying that we should pay tight or not or there is a way to pay tight no my question is, is okay, clear. I, make it clear. So, I want to know if we should pay tight or not oh, pay tight. Ethics. And if we have to pay tight, how do we pay tight? Okay. The, the answer to your question is a capital N and a capital O with an exclamation point at the end. No, no tithe. 
But if you if you want to disobey what God says, if you don't want to listen to us, if you feel the necessity, if you feel the rage inside of you to give your pastor tithing, give him some cassava. How about that? Give him some jollof rice. Don't give him your money because it was never about money. It was never about 10% of your money. It is lies. You need to come up out of these churches, brothers and sisters. You're not learning anything. And when Christ comes back, there's not going to be any excuse for you in that day. Did you have Martin. another? Yes, let, 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 let's, let's, let's take to that particular, the, the answer you just gave. You know, we, we are currently having this conversation uh, via the internet. All, and uh, FM. all these things, all these things cost money. I can't use cassava or jollof rice to buy data. So if my pastor comes to me and say, look, we need to sp spread the word. Let's say my pastor is, uh, or my bishop is Bishop Nathaniel. He says, look, Absolutely. we need to send this good message to the rest of the world. How do we do it? We need money to get data to connect from wherever we are to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. How do we how do we do this? How well, do we do this when you are saying now that if you want to give your pastor something, you have to give him maybe your jollof rice or because the Bible talks about seed and not necessarily money. Yes. Okay. Okay. First and foremost, you said to give the pastors money to spread the word. Every pastor in Ghana is not spreading the word. They're spreading the word of the white man. They're not spreading the word of the good gospel of Jesus Christ. That's one. Get me Isaiah 8, verse 20, Ashbel, please. This is the first thing you must realize. Stop being enablers. Stop being enablers. You're giving him money to spread false doctrine. It makes no sense. Unless you hate your people, unless you despise your people, and you want your people to continue to be lost, then go ahead, support these wicked pastors. Isaiah 8, verse 20. Come on. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Go to ahead. the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. There is no light in these pastors. They are not speaking according to this word. So why would you continue to um, give money to these pastors who are not doing the will of God. They're not teaching the people the right way. Now, can these pastors repent? Absolutely, they can repent. Now, the question you should be asking yourself is, do they want to repent? Because the minute they start teaching the true gospel, a lot of people is going to start walking out of those churches. You know why? Because our people hate the laws of God. And if the people walk out of these bush meat uh, churches, bush meat pastor eating churches in Ghana, you ain't going to be able to afford the Rolls Royce. You're not going to be able to afford the mansion. So that's a choice that these pastors are going to have to make. Do I love God or do I love money? Thank you so very much, uh, Captain Isaac. I, I think that we have, we've had a very wonderful experience this evening about the very sensitive issue of Titan. Uh, we have barely two minutes to go. So I'll just give you a minute to wrap up to to wrap up the, the conversation we've had and then uh, I'll, we'll, we'll say farewell and bring down curtains on this on, on today's program yes sir yes sir get me matthew 19 verse 16 i'm going to read the scripture this is what christ said this is what christ said ultimate fm the book of matthew chapter 19 and verse 16 yeah you're going to read all the way to 22 go ahead and behold one came and said unto him good master what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So we all want eternal life. The brothers and sisters, the Israelites scattered in Ghana, they want eternal life. We want eternal life. Go ahead. And he said, uh, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? Go ahead. There is none good but one. That is God. Come on. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. So we must keep the commandments of God. Go ahead. He saith unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt not do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So if these pastors love their neighbor as they love themselves, because clearly you see they love themselves, 
from all the things that they're buying and the way they dress and how they live. Go ahead. The young man saith unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou has and give to the poor. You hear that? So that's a challenge to every pastor in Ghana and scattered throughout Africa. You have an abundance of many things because you've been robbing the people for, for so long. Christ just challenged you. If you love Christ, he says, go and sell your things. Not all your things, so you're sitting in the street poor. But a lot of you have multiple houses, multiple planes, multiple cars. Sell those things and give it to the poor. That's the challenge. And keep the commandments of God. And if you don't know how to teach the people, come to Israel United in Christ so you can learn the proper way to teach the people of God. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.